All right, so today we're going to be fixing up the Shooter Tutorial 11, the Enemy Part 2. I've gotten lots of complaints. People weren't able to follow along. It's because I spliced it up and stuff. As a forewarning, some of the naming conventions that we're going to be doing inside of this video are going to get it a little bit more messed up. It's going to be changing things and like the names aren't going to match up with the later tutorials in this video because I want to show you how to name things correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now inside of here. So some of the extra names for the parameters inside of here and stuff like that are not going to match up with later videos and the way that we're doing things inside of here are not going to match up with later videos so it should only be this get dir that's going to be so much different this get dir function inside of your static body on test shooting that should be the only thing that's going to be really different from the later videos just want to warn you ahead of time though that that will be different so just kind of ignore those differences as the video goes on i don't think we make any big changes to get dir though in any later video so it shouldn't really affect you in any way so right now where we left off in the previous videos is these things are basically shooting at us and we can you know, move around like this and they're all firing exactly the same rate at exactly our position which is not good we don't want it to work that way and the reason why we don't want it to shoot exactly our position by the way is because we can just simply move from our position and dodge at all times right look at this i'm just barely moving and dodging and dodging and dodging because i'm just not in the position that they're shooting at so what we're going to be doing is we're going to make it so that instead of shooting directly at our ship they're going to be able to shoot a little bit around our ship just a little bit of an offset to that now that offset that position we're going to be basically changing the direction they're shooting at so right here where they're getting the direction where we're getting the direction this instead of just returning this position right here we want them to return something different and that different number we're going to actually have a variable for so we're going to make this variable it's going to be called a new direction like this a new dir and it's going to work just like what we did before this uh, position right here. So we can literally copy and paste it if you want. You just do target.position and minus the position, but we're not gonna be normalizing it. Am I spelling position right? Oh, good. No, I'm not, position, there we go. At the end of all this, we're gonna actually just be returning the new direction. Now, everything that's gonna be happening in between here and between these two sandwich buns, you can think of it, are kind of the ingredients. It's gonna be us changing this new direction and we're gonna be adding in that offset. We're gonna be adding in that additional number to offset it by. So the way that we're gonna create this offset is we're gonna have fed in right here because up here inside of our ready we don't want an offset at all we want zero offset but well, we want this ready right here this direction to be exactly where the location of the player is because we're going to be using this to be going to the player later on whereas down here where this bullet's at with this direction's at we want this to be offset because we want to be shooting around the player like say this is going to be high production quality guys uh say this is the player right <laughs> and this is the enemy and these are the enemies now if the enemy's shooting directly at the player you saw earlier how he's able to just kind of dodge it right but now say instead of that he the enemy shoot like this around the player and occasionally even shoots at the player right because the offset might move all around and if you have more guys like this it eventually it creates a bullet that looks kind of like this you're not going to be able to sit still and just avoid bullets anymore you're not going to be able to just move like a little millimeter at a time and dodge bullets you're going to have to actually go and drive and dodge around on entire bullet hells especially as your ship is able to move faster and stuff so that's kind of what we're going for here and that's why we're creating this offset what we need is the second parameter here that's what i'm saying and so we're going to have a direction offset here for the parameter and that direction offset is going to be where we can feed into this to create that offset that's going to be able to feed into this and again we want zero to be right here because we don't want that offset to actually do anything up here we want to go exactly to where the player's at and over here we want to shoot around the player so we want a direction that's towards where the player is we're going to put five here to begin with now how do we actually add that offset onto here and the thing is we don't always want to be five you saw on this that was sometimes you want to shoot exactly to where the player is or right around where the player is so we want five to be kind of the maximum and we can we also don't want it to only be in one direction that they're shooting around and we want them to shoot in both directions around the player the way that you go about doing that is you get a random range between negative five or the negative offset in this case and the positive form of the offset and let me show you what i'm talking about we can say we can make another variable here We'll create a variable just called random offset. The name does not matter, but I'm going to name it random offset. We're going to do random dot underscore range. And then for this number, we can just say a negative dir offset to the dir offset. Oh, and it should be rand range. Sorry. So you're going to do rand range like that. And then you go negative dir offset to dir offset. That will actually give you an offset right there. And this is going to be stored in this variable. Now we're not applying this to our direction anywhere. So in order to apply that to our direction, we have to actually get our direction. So we go back to that variable new dir. We set it equal to something new. And because it's a vector two, because directions in general are vector twos. And then we're going to take our new direction to what we already have. And we're going to get the X of it. And we're going to add in that random offset. 
So at this point right there, we're going to take the X and we're adding in the random offset, whatever that number is between negative five and five. And then we're going to do the same thing to Y. And when we have all of that done right there, that right there is going to return a new direction right there. Now, the problem with this is this new direction is huge because it's not normalized anywhere. So at the end of this, we simply normalized it like this. Or we can even do it down here. Since this code is getting a little long and hard to read, we could even just do it right here and go not normalize. It doesn't really matter where we normalize it after this point right here, as long as this is done. So either normalize it there or there, depending on how you like your code to look. And with that done, we've done the majority of what we need to do here inside of this video. We've got it so that we can actually shoot around the player. You see the bullets aren't just shooting straight at him anymore. Huh, five might not be enough. All right, so let's try something bigger than five. Let's try like 50. I think 50 is a pretty good number then. There we go. That looks about right. 50 is a pretty good number. So let's use 50 for the offset for the bullets down here, right? You can completely see that they're not just shooting straight at my player at this point. Not always, at least. There are some bullets that are where we're going to dodge. So if I'm trying to dodge things, it's a lot harder now. Okay, so at this point right here, we're at a pretty good place. Now the thing is that the player is actually not inside the player group. Uh, so if we go to group, well, in my case, he is a player group. That's why the bullets are vanishing. So you guys still, though, have to go into your player, go to node, go to groups, then you got to add player on here. So you have to write player and hit add and that'll add the player group like I have it inside of here. And that will get you guys to where I'm at currently. And then we're going to go back to the enemy bullet TSEN, which should be up here and this right here. Sorry, not the TSN. We will actually want the uh, enemy bullet script like this. And we have a couple extra things that we want to do inside of here. Now, something that might be new to you if you're new to programming in general is an L if statement. This basically means when we're going through F right here, there's some things that if this is not true, we'll do something else. We'll check something else. And that's an L if like this. It's an if statement that only works if this one's false. So if it's not a player, in other words, body that is in group, and then we'll check to see some other things. Now we want to check to see if it's an obstacle because that also makes that means that we want to queue free. So if their bullets hit an obstacle, in other words, if an enemy bullet hits an obstacle, then that bullet should not exist anymore. We're going to get rid of it. And L if we also want to do one other thing, if it's in one other group, and that's if it's another enemy. At the very least, I mean, do we want it to destroy the enemy? That's a question that we might want to ask, but at the very least, we don't want the bullet to be around anymore. So we'll also queue free it in that case as well. Now you might be asking why we're not just using an else. Why not just make it so that else, you know, no matter what else it hits, it just, the bullet goes away. Well, we might want to add some extra functionality for one thing. We might want enemies to get destroyed by bullets. And another thing about this is that we might add other types of groups inside of here and bodies. We might want to program some specific functionality for them. So we're just building this so we can expand upon it further later on if we need to. And that's an important concept to grasp in programming in general is that you always want things to be built in a way where you can expand upon them later on if you need to. So we've added the player group at this point. We've got the bullets so they work inside of both of these. Now the thing about how it reacts to the player is it's not doing it very well right now. We're not doing anything to the player. So we actually want it for the time being so that we're going to get the tree which is, you know, our whole node tree right there. And we're going to actually just use that node tree and we're going to actually say reload current scene like this. This is another function. And what this does is it literally reloads your current scene. So when that bullet hits us, not only will the bullet disappear, but the current scene will actually restart. So if I'm starting to dodge around and then I get hit by a bullet, boom, you see I just started back in my location. So let's get back in a different location and boom, if I get hit because I made that collision box so small, scene restarts. Perfect. So that means that there is now a consequence to getting hit by the enemy's bullets. We got a game going now, guys. Now there's one other thing I want to do, and that's the only other thing I don't like about this is that they're all shooting at exactly the same time, which it, it's kind of works out because of how erratic the direction they're shooting in is. Wow, I was actually trying to dodge there, but it's not cool because, well, they seem like they're just like one hive mind, which isn't what I'm going for here. So in order to fix this, we're actually going to be messing with the timer script that's on our enemies here, right? Going over here in the enemy and on the timer, there's a couple things that I want to show you. And the thing is what well, we can access this timer at any time that we want. If I go back inside of our enemy script and let's actually rename this timer with a lowercase t and we're going to delete these other enemies. Uh, the reason why we're deleting these other enemies is because this is the way I did inside the other video and any changes that we make to this enemy we want it to go to the other enemies now the way that you normally do this is you normally make this into a scene this enemy into its own scene so that it works basically like a prefab does in unity where like if you make the changes in that scene it affects all the things just like all the bullets are affected by our changes that we make in these bullets I didn't do that in the previous tutorials when I previously recorded this so I'm not going to do that in today's tutorial I am going to make this a lowercase t because it's what I did in the previous tutorial as well 
well. I don't know what kind of genius I thought I was back then, but <laughs> I, I just renamed things like stupidly, okay, apparently. Um, so I don't want this to differ from your scripts in later videos is the reason why we're doing this. Okay, and we're going to go over to our enemy script. And right now, on this timer timeout, it's working like that. Now, the thing is, we want to be able to mess with things inside this ready right here. We're going to mess with our timer inside of this ready. So what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to go over here. We're going to say money sign timer, which gives us access to the timer. And notice I'm spelling it exactly the same as that timer right there. I have that lowercase t on there. It's probably what I was trying to go for when I renamed it in my previous tutorials was to show you that capitalization had to be exactly the same. You know what? Pass me was a genius. Never mind. So money sign timer. And then you can simply change things on that timer like this. So you can access the variable wait time like this. And we can set it to a random range like we did a lot of other things inside this video. And we can do 0.5, for instance, to 1.5, which will give it a faster time than what we're using right now, that 0.7, or a really slow time. And so the mechanisms will actually shoot at different speeds. These different enemies will shoot at different speeds. And it's going to be set when they first spawn, when they're first ready. And I want to show you what I'm talking about here. If I go in my timer, this is that wait time. This wait time right here is the same as this. And it'll be one of these numbers on here. It, it won't just be 0.7 anymore. It'll change. Now, the problem here, and I'm going to show you what that problem here is if I select this enemy and I duplicate him by can control D and control D and control D you're gonna see if I hit the play button now they're all firing the same time the first time and I didn't dodge holy moly now the reason why they're doing that why they're firing at the same rate the first time is because of this auto start so let's delete all these other enemies let's just shift click all those delete delete these three nodes and get rid of them all because the past album was a genius and didn't make these into scenes uh, and then let's go over here unclick auto start because they're auto start and they're auto starting at that 0.7 that's messing things up right now we don't want it to auto start at 0.7 we want to manipulate the wait time inside of here and the start on here so instead of that we're going to actually go timer dot start which is that function right there and there we go we got timer dot start and that will start the timer for us i gotta duplicate the enemies again so let's go back into the scene hit control d we're gonna put four of them around us because what past alvin did and then we're gonna hit play and then they should be look how sporadic that is you can clearly see a difference from the left and right and look every time it reloads by the way it's different every time it's not gonna work exactly the same every time so isn't that great guys it's gonna be completely different every time yeah that's pretty much it. I hope that you guys liked it. I hope that this time around it's more understandable and that this is what people wanted and that it helps people complete this tutorial series because Godot is a great engine guys and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. There's some extra pro I don't even remember what problems I solved in the next video at this point. I literally had to redo this whole tutorial series so I could build this because I didn't even have this project anymore and the code wasn't in the same place anyway even if I did have the project. Please hit the like, subscribe, leave me a comment, converse with me. I like the conversations guys. I read every comment even if I don't reply to them all. Thank you all. Have a great day.